Hello viewer, welcome to our chemistry uh, presentation. Now today we are going to go to lesson 7 in electrochemistry. Welcome and stay with us for our presentation. Uh, so today we are going to actually advance on uh, what we learned uh, the other time. This time round we are going to actually uh, look at a presentation on electrochemistry which actually based on standard electrode potential. The symbol for standard electrode potential is actually E naught E naught value. It's actually this this E is actually called E naught value. So that's actually standard electrode potential. When you talk about ele uh, pot electrode potential, you are talking about actually the electromotive force. You are actually talking about the electromotive force, and therefore it should actually come to your attention that we are not talking uh, much about anything else, but we are talking now about uh, what uh, amount of electricity is produced by a cell or a combination of uh, cells. Now let's let's actually uh, look at the objectives uh, uh, of this lesson. Number one, we are saying the learner should be able to identify the standard, the standard condition for measuring electrode potentials. Learner should be able to identify standard condition for measuring elect, uh, electrode potentials. Number two, define the entire standard electrode potential of a cell. Now, then that, this uh, brings us to actually our lesson today, and in this we are saying that uh, we learn about the electrode potential, which is equally the E naught E naught value E naught value. Now, so we are saying, what is this uh, standard electrode potential? Standard electrode potential is equally obtained if the hydrogen half cell is used as a reference electrode. So it's actually obtained when. Uh, a uh, hydrogen is used as a reference electron. Reference means actually the point whereby you take, uh, you, you take, you, you, you move away from there. You move to your left hand or the right hand side. So that's actually reference point. Okay. Now, then uh, uh, this standard electrode position actually is consists of a nat platinum electrode in mass in one molar solution of sulfuric acid, which actually uh, is actually uh, identified now as the hydrogen ions. You know acid is actually uh, identified there or it, it is termed as an acid because of the hydrogen ions it has. Now, uh, it's actually uh, we have here the hydrogen hydrogen gas is purple on the platinum electrode at the, at the actually the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. That's actually this room temperature. So we have now the hydrogen gas purple on platinum ele electrode at a temperature of uh, 25 degrees Celsius. 25 degrees Celsius. So, uh, uh, number two, we have atmospheric pressure of uh, 1,001, 300 uh, Pascal or, or newt uh, newtons per square meters. Or we have there as 760 millimeters mercury or 76 centimeters uh, meters, uh, centimeters mercury. That is equally the standard pressure. This is equally one atmosphere. So we can actually sum up that as one atmosphere. This is equally terms you use in physics and uh, as well in chemistry. But mostly uh, we use this in atmosphere in chemistry. Now, uh, uh, we we'll also have a concentration of, uh, of one more, one mole, or one molar of actually a sulfuric acid. So we actually have to prepare one molar of uh, sulfuric acid solution. And therefore, that actually act as the standard conditions that it requires for uh, this reference electrode to actually occur. And don't forget that we are actually bubbling in the hydrogen gas. We're bubbling in the hydrogen gas. Now, the hydrogen is actually absorbed on the surface of the platinum. It's actually absorbed on the surface of the platinum. And therefore, because platinum here is not actually uh, it's an inert electrode. It's an inert electrode. Therefore, it does not participate in the reaction. But it facilitates now the the ionization of, uh, of of hydrogen ions. Let's now see what really happens. An equilibrium. I think you know an equilibrium actually is what. Now an equilibrium exists between the uh, the absorbed layer and the molecular hydrogen and the hydrogen ions in the solution to form a half cell. So we have there an equilibrium. So what is this equilibrium here? 
So we are saying here, we'll have there a half, a half, a half moles of hydrogen gas will give us one ion of hydrogen uh, ion plus one electron. So this is equally an equilibrium whereby now we have the forward reaction and the backward rea reaction taking place at the same time. So that equally establish an equilibrium. It's established an equilibrium. So therefore we will have here an equilibrium between the hydrogen gas and the hydrogen uh, ions. Now the upside representation is as as follows. So we have here this is platinum. Platinum here is what? Is an another electron. That's therefore we have to recognize that. So just like uh, uh, in uh, in other half equations, we are we are using uh, maybe the metal met, metal as its electrode. At the same time, that metal is acting as actually the one uh, which actually uh, ionizes. So this one platinum is not ionized. Therefore, we have to include that. This one means it is actually an another electrode. Then we have half half moles of hydrogen gas. Then we have. Uh, one mole of uh, 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 this uh, hydrogen ions, then we have it in uh, one molar solution. So this is actually a cell representation, representation of the half cell of the hydrogen, which is actually acting as a reverence electrode. Now, the standard electrode potential is, is thus defined as the potential difference. You see now, uh, this is actually the PD. Potential difference for a cell comprising of a particular element in contact with one mole, one molar solution of its own ions, and the standard hydrogen ele electrode. So, uh, why are we using uh, hydrogen as a standard electrode? We are going to see later on that we are we have a hydrogen being standard because it has some conditions that actually it will be met by 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 that. So we are actually connecting the the cell of hydrogen and that of an element we want to measure. The, the standard electron. So it's actually the PD, the difference between uh, the, the element in contact with one mole of, of its own ions and the standard hydrogen ele electron. It is actually standard. Now, now if if the other electrode has a higher or greater tendency to lose electrons than hydrogen electron, it has a higher tendency. If it has a higher tendency to lose electrons. You know, hydrogen actually is, is actually losing the electrons. But now we have, in, in comparison to hydrogen, we have those which actually have high tendency. Therefore, the electrode is therefore uh, negative with respect to hydrogen, hydrogen electrode. And its electrode potential has negative E value. I, I hope you are getting that. If it has high tendency to, to lose electrons, therefore the electrode there, that electrode will be uh, negatively charged electrode. And the, the E naught value here will be negative. You have to, to note this. The E naught value here, the electromotive force that you actually produce here will be negative. It will be negative. Now, number two, we are saying if the other electrode has a lower uh, or lesser tendency to actually lose electrons than the hydrogen electrode, the electrode is therefore positive. If it has a lower tendency, that means this one is uh, likely to gain electrons than to lose. So therefore, the tendency here will be what? Uh, will be equally, uh, uh, this one will be now positive. It's a right positive terminal with respect to hydrogen uh, hydrogen electrode. Now, so the inner value here will be positive. Why? Because this one has now lower tendency to, to equally to gain electrons. And therefore, this one loses the, uh, uh, loses the and uh, gains electrons. It's equally gains electrons. Now, uh, let's continue. Now, let us see the standard electrode potentials which are actually been measured by scientists. Now, these actually are standards. They, they have been measured and they actually uh, were, da were done in the laboratory after several tests. Now, if you have, I think you, you now see this. So we say those one which actually has, let's, let's go back here. Those one which has high ten tendency to, to lose electrons are actually negat negat negatively negative electrons. And therefore, the inner value actually they are negative. And those which actually are likely to uh, to uh, less le uh, lower less likely to lose electrons are positive, and therefore the standard electrode potential there will be positive. So on the other side here, so we have here flu uh, for example fluorine, and compared to hydrogen, you no know, fluorine is likely to gain electrons and lose, and therefore this one the the inner value here will be positive. That's why you see here the standard inner value there is positive two point eight seven. And now, if we have here maybe uh, 
uh, peroxide here. Now, this will likely be maybe for other cases. It's 1.77, therefore, it's actually likely to, to actually uh, gain electrons and do and to lose. And then we have manganese. Then we have, how does it come to this? This uh, uh, chlorine. Chlorine here is likely to gain electrons than to lose. Therefore, it has actually the positive sign. Then we have uh, bromine here. Bromine is the same thing. It's li uh, likely to, to gain electrons than, than to lose. And therefore, this one acts as a positive terminal. Then also, silver here. Silver here is actually uh, uh, lower than hydrogen in the case series. And therefore, this one is actually likely to lose electrons than to gain as compared to hydrogen. We have also ion 3. Ion 3 also the same. It's actually likely to lose uh, to gain electrons than, than to lose as compared to hydrogen. And then we have here uh, 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 iron ions. Then we have here iodine. Iodine. Iodine here the same thing. It's likely to, to, to actually lose uh, to gain electrons and to lose. Copper the same thing. Likely to gain electrons and to, tan, 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 tan to lose as compared to hydrogen. And therefore here, hydrogen here is actually acting as a standard because hydrogen here has uh, the electron position of zero zero. The reason why hydrogen is acting as a reference electron, anything in, in life, anything even if, if it is monetary, if it is numbers, if it is what, we have it as actually the reference here is zero. Without the zero, uh, maybe other things will actually lack meaning. Even money will lack meaning and other things. So we have in here hydrogen as standard, uh, standard uh, or a reference electrode because we have it has electrode position of 0 0.004 volts. Has electrode position of 0 0.004 volts. Now on the other side, we have now hydrogen and uh, others. If you compare hydrogen and, uh, and lead, lead here is likely to lose electron and hydrogen. And therefore, this one now, it is actually uh, higher in hydrogen. Therefore, the electron position here will be negative. It is actually very important for you to know that. So uh, even ion 2, same, same two ions, we have aluminum, we have uh, magnesium, we have sodium. All of them will have them. So I want you, to, uh, during around three time, you follow these uh, electron potentials. And you see. And I want you also you to, to note this. Note this. Uh, note this, uh, that how the electron position has been, has been arranged. So therefore, this actually brings us to actually that. Now, let us uh, note the following. Let us note the following. Let us note the following. Number one, the unit value generally shows the po possibility of variation of a reduction process or oxidizing strength. So, we have actually the possibility of, uh, of a reduction process or oxidizing strength. Now, what is the meaning of this? The element in the half cell with the highest uh, e naught value easily gain or acquire electrons. The one in the actually in the high, higher in what? In uh, e naught value. That means the one which is actually more positive. More positive can easily acquire ele electrons. Can easily acquire electrons. Number, number three, we are saying this is actually does the strongest oxidizing agent. It is actually the strongest oxidizing agent. Why? Because it gains ele electrons. If it gains electrons, and therefore it renders the other the other substance or the other metal uh, or the other the other element to be uh, positive, and therefore it's, it is termed as oxidizing element, and it is uh, its, its reduction process is highly po possible. So it's highly to be reduced than to be than, than to be uh, than to be oxidized. Now uh, we are seeing the element in the half cell with the lo lowest E naught value easily donates electrons, easily donate electrons. So if it has the uh, lowest, that means the one which is more negative, the one which is more negative easily donates the electrons, easily donates electrons. Now, uh, we are saying also, it is actually the stars the strongest reducing agent. So the one which has more negative, more negative there is actually the strongest reducing agent. And therefore, the process is actually, uh, the, the process, process is the least uh, possible uh, the reduction is equally least possible. Now, it is actually for, uh, uh, forced. The overall the redox reaction is possible if it has a positive if not finally. This is actually general, uh, generally. Now, I want us to go back a uh, lit, uh, uh, little bit or not we, one, one what we have seen. Now, we have talked about uh, the one which actually is more negative. It's one more negative. The one which is more negative, is, we have said, is actually a reducing agent. 
and therefore the one which is more negative uh, there is a reducing agent. The one which is more positive is actually oxidizing agent. It actually gains electrons. So if you look at this, so the uh, strongest oxidizing agent here will be none other than, than fluorine. But now, maybe in some situation whereby you are given a question, now you should actually see the one which is more negative, more positive I mean. More positive is the one which is now oxidizing eh, agent. So you just look at that, because now the examiner will not give you the same thing here, but it will, maybe the examiner will pick some of them. So the, the one which is actually the strongest oxidizing agent is the one which is more positive, more positive. Now, in the other hand, the one which is actually uh, uh, strongest uh, reducing agent is the one which is more negative. More negative there would be none other than uh, potassium here. So therefore, we'll have here potassium as the strongest uh, reducing agent. Potassium will be acting as the strongest reducing agent. And therefore, that actually uh, brings us to conclude uh, this way. This has bring us to conclude this way. That now, look at this. This is very important now. The, the overall redox reaction is possible if it has a positive E0 value. So if we have the E0 value there to be positive, if we have the E0 value to be positive, then we are saying that uh, the overall reaction there will be what? Will be possible. But if it is negative, that reaction is not possible. It's not possible. So how do we get this? We are going to see how we calculate this. So because now you, like, you are going to be given how to calculate that, therefore you must know this. Not this, but when you when you when you will be actually learning this in future, you will actually uh, be able to uh, uh, capture that. Now, we are saying if, if the overall redox reaction is not possible, it has a negative E0 value, as I think as I've said. So that marks the end of our presentation. But now I want to give you an assignment that you actually identify identify the strongest uh, strongest oxidizing agent, strongest reducing agent, and. Uh, uh, reference electron. I think that those are very important and maybe in others we are going to construct and the two cells which are going to give us the highest EMF. The highest EMF. Now, so we are going to look at more of that. So thank you, but don't forget to subscribe and Olympus Tonic on YouTube to actually obtain more lessons. Thank you very much. That was lesson 7 and therefore that brings us to the end of lesson 7. Thank you.